Hello, welcome to the SmartLink installation tutorial. SmartLink is a free PacBio provided software required for instrument management, run setup, monitoring, and viewing performance metrics. Additionally, SmartLink can be optionally configured to run push button secondary analyses depending on the compute resources available. In general, SmartLink is a web service setup and hosted by PacBio or locally on a dedicated Linux server or VM, which can be accessed from any computer on the same network via a web browser. There are three flavors of SmartLink. SmartLink Cloud is provided and hosted by PacBio for free. This enables quick setup for running the instrument and monitoring runs. While it does not currently have secondary analysis capabilities, third-party solutions through compatible partners are available. SmartLink Lite is a lightweight on-premises solution with minimal hardware requirements, only four CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This solution is ideal for sites with network restrictions preventing cloud use, but push-button analysis, analysis solutions are not needed. A full SmartLink installation is an on-premises solution with larger hardware requirements, but with the advantage of enabling push-button secondary analysis capabilities. For the rest of this video, I will be focusing on a full on-premises SmartLink installation. SmartLink is supported by Ubuntu and Rocky operating systems. Additionally, we recommend setting up a job management system. SmartLink can support Slurm, SGE, PBS, and LSF. The recommended setup for SmartLink is a dedicated head node running SmartLink, which can submit analysis jobs to a high-performance computer or HPC cluster. The SmartLink head node requires eight cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM, while the connected HPC should have 64 cores and 256 gigabytes of RAM, or four gigabytes per core. Optionally, you can install SmartLink as a single node. However, a job management system is still recommended. The minimum requirements for a single node solution is 16 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM. This setup will have limited analysis capabilities. On the right is a network diagram showing how SmartLink connects to the instrument, to the HPC, and to PacBio remote services for support. It also shows how any computer on the same network can access SmartLink using a web browser. Finally, regardless of whether you choose to use SmartLink Cloud, SmartLink Lite, or a full SmartLink installation, you will need to ensure there is adequate storage space for the data transferred off the instrument and any analysis workflows run. The amount of storage required will depend on your instrument and analysis workload. After installation, you can access SmartLink from your web browser where you will find five modules, instruments, sample setup, runs, data management, and smart analysis. You will see more of SmartLink during the installation demo, so let's get started. To start, you should note the user installing SmartLink. While SmartLink can be installed by any user, we recommend installing SmartLink as a dedicated service account. We recommend the username Smart Analysis and to set a variable named Smart User. Do not install SmartLink as the root user. Next, we need to decide where to install SmartLink. If you want secondary analysis capabilities, then the install directory needs to be accessible by both the SmartLink head node or virtual machine, as well as by any compute nodes. We recommend setting the installation directory to opt PacBio SmartLink and to set a variable named SmartRoot indicating the installation location of, for SmartLink. Note that opt PacBio directory should be made prior to installation and should be owned by the smart user with read, write, execute permissions. The SmartLink directory will be created during installation. There are a few additional directories that will be useful to you post installation. So for later convenience, let's go ahead and add those now. These include locations to the SmartLink admin and other PacBio tools. We've added all these variables to our bash RC, so let's source the file so that become available to us. And then we can echo SmartRoot and our path to confirm these changes. All right, now we're ready to download SmartLink. Navigate to op PacBio and then download the latest version, currently version 25.2 using wget. You can copy the download link from pacbio.com slash support slash software downloads. Now let's unzip the file and take a look at what's inside. 
Inside, we'll find the .run installer file and the md5 file to optionally verify that the file's contents are intact. All that's left is to run the installer, which will interactively guide you through the installation process. A couple of notes before I run the command. If you're upgrading SmartLink, you need to add dash dash upgrade. If you're installing SmartLink Lite, add Lite equals true, JMS type equals none, and in workers equals four. All right, let's go through the installation process. When you launch the installer, it will first extract the necessary, necessary bundles. After this, there will be 10 steps to go through interactively. Part zero is the system prerequisite check to confirm memory, processors, and file limits. You'll note that I have an error for my memory and processor requirements. While this will not prevent me from installing SmartLink, you should note that the performance cannot be guaranteed if the minimum specs are not met. At the prompt, the options are shown in square brackets. The capital letter is the default choice. You can choose to accept the defaults by pressing enter or type in the letter of the option you want to select. Part one is simply verifying the SmartLink user and can quickly be accepted. And part two is choosing the SmartLink server's DNS name. A list of options may be presented to you to choose from, or you can specify an alternate name. I chose to use the direct IP address instead. Part three is setting the SmartLink UI and services ports. Again, the defaults are shown in square brackets and can be accepted by pressing enter. This section will also automatically calculate Java memory settings based on the system memory. We recommend accepting the defaults here. Part four is setting up the SmartLink SQL database. In particular, the placement of the database can be altered but I will be accepting the default location in smart root user data db data dot default. Part five is setting up the SmartLink Cromwell server for smart analysis jobs. Again, the default port can be accepted. Part six is setting up the SmartLink jobs and temporary directories. The jobs directory is where the results of smart analysis workflows will be stored and can become quite sizable depending on the workflows you plan on running. Make sure this location has suitable storage space and is accessible by all compute nodes. I'll be accepting the default location in smart root user data jobs root dot default. The temporary directory defaults to slash temp slash smart link, but I'll choose to use the root temporary directory instead. Part seven sets up connection to PacBio remote event and update services to enable you to send PacBio SmartLink troubleshooting logs and smart analysis job logs. Part eight is for setting up SmartLink analysis job email notifications. This step is optional and can be skipped by pressing enter. Part nine is the most comprehensive step and is for setting up smart analysis compute configurations. You can set up multiple different compute configurations for submitting jobs to different partitions or locally. As an example, you can set up a configuration for a general slurm submission, a separate configuration for a high memory partition of the HPC, and a third configuration for a local or non-distributed analysis. First is simply choosing a name for the configuration, setting the number of processors per task, chunks per file, and concurrent job limit. Here I've accepted the default. Next is choosing a job management system or JMS such as slurm, PBS, or LSF. The installer should recognize which you have available on your system and present you with that option. I will be using Slurm. The installer will detect several default settings for your JMS. I recommend choosing no here to modify these settings and go through the settings individually, particularly to rechange the memory request settings. You will be asked to confirm the partition you want to use, any additional arguments that need to be added to sbatch commands, any account associated with job submissions, and finally, whether sbatch should request memory for a given workflow, which again, I recommend changing to yes. Next, you'll be asked if you want to add any additional compute configurations. For this demo, I will be adding a second configuration for a local or non-distributed submission configuration. Here, I've named the configuration local analysis, except the default settings, and then chosen to use none as the JMS type. After this, you can exit the configuration menu by hitting eight. 
Part 10, the last step, simply specifies the maximum number of smart analysis workflows that can be run at the same time. I will be accepting the default of eight. Following this, you'll see several lines regarding database setup, and finally, smart link install successful. Navigating to smart root, you'll find several directories. Most importantly is the admin bin directory, which includes the smart link admin tools such as services start and stop. The smart commands bin directory, which contains PacBio bioinformatic tools such as PBSV, and the user data directory, which contains the smart link database and job directory set up during install, as well as the smart link configuration file, which can be used to easily track down your settings and your IP or DNS name if needed. Now we need to start smart link services using the smart root admin bin services start command. At the end, you should see services started successfully. Once started, you can navigate to the SmartLink UI by opening a web browser and navigating to the SmartLink server's DNS name or IP address with port number 8243 SL. The default username is admin and the password is also admin, but these can be easily changed using the SmartLink admin tools. See the SmartLink install guide for more details. Upon login, you'll be prompted to notify PacBio of your SmartLink installation. In the settings, you'll find additional useful information, such as where you will set up the transfer scheme and set up your instruments. You'll also find settings for managing users, and under updates, you'll find the ability to download and install the human and mouse reference genomes, which are useful for smart analysis workflows. Back in the terminal, the last thing we need to do is run a site acceptance test to confirm SmartLink is working properly. At the end, you should see job successful. Back in SmartLink's web interface, you'll find the different modules, and specifically the Smart Analysis module, you'll find the test job, which you can open to view various metrics about the analysis results. And that's it. Congrats, you've successfully installed SmartLink. Thanks for watching and happy hi-fi sequencing. For more information, you can visit the resources on this page or check out our application brief highlighting the different versions of SmartLink. Thanks again for watching.